Hi, welcome. It is nice to see that someone is interested in whatever this is. In my last video, I did an unboxing of the new MacBook Pro 2020, the baseline one, the one with the two Thunderbolt ports. In this video, I'm going to compare it to the 2015 MacBook Air. In the title of the video, I mentioned that there is an unexpected surprise. It's a bit unpleasant as well. I'll tell you right ahead so that you don't think this is a clickbait. It's the webcam. Yes, from what I've seen and from what I will show you in a bit, the webcam of the 2015 MacBook Air is way better than the 2020 MacBook Pro. The microphone is a different story though, but I'm more about that later. So let's start with why I chose this MacBook, this one. Not the Air, not the Air with the i5 processor, and not the MacBook Pro with the 10th gen Intel processors. I actually considered all of them, all the four choices. The MacBook Air had a heating problem that seemed to have been a real issue. Many YouTubers and tech reviewers have commented on it. And when I saw the internals of the device and the lack of a heatsink pipe, I knew this is going to be a problem. See, the MacBook Air 2015, the one that is five years old or even more, has one. Yes, this five years old MacBook Air has a heatsink pipe. The one that is lacking in the 2020 MacBook Air version. For some reason, I don't know. The 2015 MacBook Air actually rarely overheated. And when it did, the heatsink pipe helped cool the processor fast. So Apple knew that MacBook Airs need this pipe but they ignored it anyways in this year's version. They gave the space for conspiracy theories that they did this on purpose to drive people to buy the more expensive MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Air, both the i3 and the i5 Intel versions were out of my equation as I needed some power for my work. The Air would have been perfect if all what you do is typing essays, reading documents, listening to music and watching movies. And that's almost 80 to 90% of my work. But the one time every week that I need the power, the air will fail to deliver. I honestly didn't get the higher end model for budget restraints. I didn't need the extra storage or the extra RAM anyway. The higher end MacBook Pro model has four USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. Come on, Apple. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports only on a Pro model? Really? Why? And both on the same side? I can't understand this. Why not one on each side so that if you want, I want to charge from the right or the left, I could do that. And not only both on the same side, they are too close to each other. That usually plugging in an adapter in one of them blocks the other one completely. So you're left only with one port. So anyways, the base model MacBook Pro fits my needs. And with student pricing and free AirPods with the back to school promo, that was a very good deal. This actually drives us to our first point of comparison between the MacBook and the 2015 MacBook Air, the ports. So one of the few things that I will miss on the MacBook Air 2015 is the number and variety of ports. It had two USB 3 type A, an SD card, a mini display port. Now, welcome to the dongle life. Well, actually, this will not be that annoying given that you had to use a dongle if you needed to connect to an external monitor either with a VGA or HDMI port. But at least when you had to transfer a file from someone or connect to a printer that had a USB-A port, you didn't need a dongle. So until the USB-C becomes the universal port that it is destined to be one day and everyone carries a USB-C flash drive and all the cables become USB-C, until then we will still need dongles at least until Apple gives us the SD card slot back. Two more things that I will miss from the 2015 MacBook Air. One, the glowing logo. I loved it. I loved this thing. I wish it comes back one day, but that's not a big deal. The big deal for me is actually the MagSafe. I know people now are used to charging everything via USB-C, their phones, their laptops, everything. But coming from 10 years with MagSafe, it will be hard, especially for someone as clumsy as I am. I stumbled upon the charging cords many times, like many times, and the MagSafe always had my back. Now I think I will have to be super careful around my MacBook more than before. It's not going to be easy. Externally, the new MacBook Pro is smaller than the MacBook Air in every dimension, even in thickness, 
only when it comes to the fixed part of the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air and Pro back in 2015 both came in one color, silver. So I had a silver MacBook for more than 10 years. So it was time for a change. So I got the space gray one, which is actually pretty. But be careful, it's scratched easy. One other difference that I will miss is the feel of the actual unibody. The aluminium feels different, it sounds different, and it reacts to heat differently. Listen to that. It sounds like it has a different kind of coating. Some reviewers claim that the MacBook's original color is silver and the space gray is a coating. So if you scratch it, it will show its original silver color. That's why buying the silver might be the safer choice. When both laptops are charging and I touch both of them at the same time, I can feel that electric static current in the new MacBook Pro, but not on the air for some reason. It feels like the new one has a thinner layer of aluminium, although they, there is absolutely no flex in the body of the laptop. They also react differently to heat. I don't know if that's due to the tapering end of the MacBook Air or the battery placement or something that has to do with the heating system on both, but the 2020 Pro feels hotter on the palm rest area. The air feels much cooler even when both are at the same temperature. The bezels on the MacBook Air are humongous. While the new Pro is not the slimmest bezels on the market, not even the slimmest on the Apple lineup, but they are nothing compared to the huge silver bezels on the MacBook Air. I'm happy I'll not be looking at these bezels again. But to its credit, it never had the fingerprint problem that the new 2020 Pro has. Which takes us to the display. The display on the thing is spectacular. It has a retina display, 13.3 inch display with IPS technology, 2560 by 1600 with 500 nits brightness. It had white color, gamut P3 and true tone technology. This provides you with the best display on the market with the best color accuracy hands down. At least until the mini LEDs becomes a popular thing. The display on the MacBook Air 2015 was Mm, okay, it did the job. It was not the most color accurate and the resolution was lower than the competition, but for my needs, typing and reading PDFs and watching 720p and rarely 1080p videos, it did the job. I was not that picky until I tried the new display. It's ages ahead, but again, it depends on your needs. It had a 1440 by 900 pixel display and the Intel HD Graphics 5000 and only 344 nits of maximum brightness. For me, it was more than enough because most of my work was done indoors. Here's an example of a zoomed in screenshot from both screens. Now the webcams. This was a shocking surprise for me. I went into this test knowing that both webcams are 720 potato webcams with a way better microphone on the new MacBook, but what I saw really surprised me. Let me show you. So this is the webcam and microphone test on the MacBook Air 2015. And this is the webcam and microphone test on the MacBook Pro 2020. Am I seeing this right? It seems that, first of all, the angle on the MacBook Pro is wider. I can see more from the ceiling and from the picture on the side on the MacBook Pro, but other than that, the sharpness is better on the MacBook Air. The colors are better. The grains, oh my goodness, look at, look at that. Look at my shirt, look how much grains are there and on the ceiling and on the curtains in the background. Apple, what did you do? The webcam, I know the microphone is Way better on the new one, but the webcam, is it really better on the five years old MacBook Air, not even Pro? That is weird. That is unexpected. Like, 
I was coming into this test expecting them to be the same. I know in the spreadsheet they are both they are both seven point two p potato. What can but this? This is not what I expected. It's sharper. It's brighter. It's less grainy on the MacBook Air twenty fifteen when compared to the MacBook Pro twenty twenty. How did you mess that up, Apple? I'll have to test it again tomorrow in the morning with sunlight. Hopefully it will be better than but this in room lighting. This is bad. This is very bad. I was not expecting that. All right, let's continue. So I'm now using the MacBook Air 2015 and I'm in the best lighting conditions in my house and this looks good. I can barely see any grains and I think the picture is clear, my face looks clear and sharp, the background is clear. Let's see the MacBook Pro 2020 now and see if, if the normal sunlight will make it better or not. So I'm in the best lighting condition in my house in the morning and I can still see the grains. I can still see greens on the on the cupboard in the background on my shirt I don't know so you tell me if if this is that much worse than the MacBook Air 2015 right I don't know how Apple messed this up that bad but it was obvious to me that the webcam on the 2020 MacBook Pro was not as bright or clear as the 2015 MacBook Air. So unless you are sitting facing your window in direct sunlight, you are better off with the 2015 MacBook Air webcam. I am just as shocked to say this as you are hearing it. On the other hand, when it comes to microphone, there is no comparison. As for the speakers, the new MacBook has richer, deeper and louder sound thanks to the grills on both sides and to the high dynamic range speakers. While the older Air had its speakers below the keyboard, which made it sound a bit muffled. But again, it was good enough for me as I usually use my headphones anyway. But you know what, let's take a listen. And thank you to Max Tech for getting me hooked up on this song. When it comes to performance, it's a no-brainer that the new Pro will have higher numbers in all the benchmarks. Like 4 times the numbers. I will not test benchmarks, as it doesn't really provide us with real-life situations where you can find your device underperforming. Let's open some apps and see. When it comes to thermals, the MacBook Air 2015 was a real champion of its time. It almost never got hot, unless I really pushed it. Remember, it had a heatsink pipe, a technology Apple now seems to include only on its Pro machines. Which keyboard is better? I know for a fact that the butterfly keyboard was not a good keyboard, period. That's why I never got last year's MacBook. The older keyboards had more key travel distance than the Magic Keyboard, not as much as the 2010 MacBook Pro I had before, that almost had like a mechanical keyboard but I don't know how to describe it the magic keyboard is more stable the keys do not wobble when they bounce back the keys are wider and they sound better I'm enjoying typing on this keyboard more than I thought I will the new magic keyboard is definitely the winner among those two although the older scissor switch keyboard was really good and the best on the market until this year the Magic Keyboard is a whole new level. The touch bar, hmm, what do I say? It's a gimmick. Not once did I feel that the touch bar increased my productivity. On the contrary, sometimes it makes things slower. The trackpad is miles ahead. The Force Touch technology is a joy to work with. Apple always designs the best trackpads in any given year, and 2020 is no exception. Force Touch is a different technology. The haptic feedback gives you a true feeling of a click in any place of the trackpad and it's almost as twice as big. 
So what's the verdict here? Would I recommend an upgrade? The short answer is yes. The new MacBook Pro is better, faster, with a better display and a better keyboard and a better trackpad and a better microphone and a worse webcam. My decision was based on the fact that I could sell my current MacBook Air for a good price. I could also benefit from selling the AirPods for a couple of hundred dollars, as well as avoid having to replace the battery on the MacBook Air soon. Second question is should you wait for the upcoming ARM-based MacBooks? Well, this is complicated, but the short answer is no, don't wait. Because if you are planning to wait, it will be for more than two years. Why? Well, if I learned one thing from being a PhD student, is that the first draft of anything will always, always have many flaws. And it takes years for a product as big as a PhD thesis or a new MacBook lineup to be perfected. All companies, and Apple specifically, usually have problems with their first generation of their new products. The iPhone 1, iPad 1, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro Gen 1, and Apple Watch Gen 1 as well, all had flaws that were corrected in their respective Gen 2 or 3. Also, what we know so far about the ARM-based MacBooks might make you want to wait even more. We know that they will not be able to run Windows if that's important to you. We know that many applications will not work from day one. Well, the basic ones will work, of course, from day one, like Microsoft Office, Skype and Zoom, iWork apps, and basically any app that works on the iPad will work on the ARM-based MacBook from day one. But there still will be some hiccups that we know. On the positive side, we know that there will be a massive bump in the battery life. So if that's something important to you, maybe you should wait. Again, you'll wait for more than two years. As for this comparison, the 2015 MacBook Air is the undisputed champion in battery life. Its keyboard is comfortable, its sleek design gets rid of the sharp edges on the MacBook Pro, the trackpad is responsive, and you have the variety of ports that you miss on the current MacBook Pro. And you have the MagSafe port, and you have the glowing logo. This is a winning combination. It all comes down to you and your needs. If you need a MacBook now, the current MacBook Pro base model is the one to get. It fits most needs and most budgets, and it has very few compromises. If you want to run games, this can do it for you. If you want to run productivity apps, this can do it for you. If your current Mac works for you and selling it will not get you enough money to upgrade, then it's okay to stick with it right now. But remember, the next solid upgrade for the 13-inch models, the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, is at least a year away. And then you will have to wait for maybe a couple of months for tech reviewers to discover what is good and what is bad about it before you make a decision. Anyway, I hope you found what you were looking for in this video. And since this is a new channel, as you see, all your feedback in the comment section will be much appreciated for future videos. Good luck in your purchase. Peace.